Okay. So I'd like to welcome everybody to this session. And uh, in this session, we're going to be speaking about Eliza Cordelia Hassel Walker. And uh, Jenny Walton Smith is the convener of this family line, and we have a number of family members online. Uh, my name is Graham Hassel, and uh, I'm currently the chair of the Hassel Family History Association. And I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to speak a little bit about the association and and the uh, the children of Roland and Elizabeth Hassel, just to set uh, a context for this uh, discussion that we're having this evening. So here I'm going to share my screen, and. Yeah. This screen is talking a little bit about the uh, Hassel Family Association. Uh, we have a number of purposes, but basically to research the life and heritage of Roland and Elizabeth Hassel and their descendants. Uh, not just the Hassel family, but other families that they were associated with because they intermarried, and they had business relations, they had other types of relations with so many of the early settler families. Um, and we're not just interested in history, we're interested in the, in the present time as well. Um, we're interested in, in the next generation of, of hassles and how they contribute to Australia and probably even to, to other parts of the world as well, because hassles have moved in, in many different directions. Now, uh, the interesting uh, family uh, that Roland and Elizabeth had, uh, nine children, eight of whom survived to adulthood and married. Well, you press continue. You can hear you. Can you? Yeah, continue. Can, can you see my second screen with the children? Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, just, yes. Yeah, just to press continue. You can you see that? Yes. Right. Yes. You're right, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's gone, gone. Oh, it's come back. Yeah. No, it's come so, back. Yeah. It, it turning and it's changing it. Yeah. Go. And, so I've just mentioned that there are eight children who, who lived to adulthood and all who all married, even though four of those children didn't live into old age. But all eight of the children had quite a number of children. In fact, Eliza and uh, William Walker had uh, seven uh, or eight children uh, themselves, uh, eight children. And that's the line that we're, we're talking about tonight, so that we do have some descendants of Eliza and William uh, with us tonight. And this um, evening is part of a series of eight evenings that we're holding uh, in August and September to catch up with family members. Anybody's welcome to join in these sessions, but particularly trying to connect up the family lines. And this doesn't have to be the last of the meetings held by the Eliza line. You can meet again you can decide that later. One of the other activities we're doing at the moment is looking at the Hassel Heritage locations. Where are the where where are these uh, members of the family buried, and where did they live the the majority of their life? What were the the um, the locations that are important to them. We find that for Eliza and, and William Walker, I'll talk about this a little uh, further on, but we see that uh, uh, Eliza lived uh, at Bringelli near Camden. She had a land grant at O'Connell Plains called Brisbane Grove. Uh, she spent time in Blacktown. She was back in Parramatta, and then she moved pe permanently to uh, O'Connell Plains where she passed away tragically in, in 1835. William, her husband, was also buried in O'Connell Plains. So we've been trying to find out exactly where these, uh, these forebears of ours are buried. I'm going to move on just a little to look at the larger family context uh, in which Eliza lived. This is uh, some information about Roland and Elizabeth. And you see there's blue and orange and green. They, obviously, their, their early years were in uh, England, in Coventry, a very brief time in Tahiti during their missionary phase, 1.5 years with all the travel as well before they, they, they came to, to Parramatta. And we see that Roland was in Parramatta 22 years and Elizabeth 36 years. And it's those years that they had most of their children living in this house in George Street, which no longer exists. But that's where the children grew up. And we find when we, we look 
at the children, you can see the years in which they were born, roughly two years apart, uh, from Thomas to Samuel to Jonathan to Mary to James and to Eliza, who we're, we're um, looking at in this presentation. Uh, and this, this uh, becomes, I'm going to change the, to a slideshow here where I can put a little bit of a graphic on. Um, we're talking about Eliza, who lived from 1804 to 1835. She passed away just aged 31. And we see that her father died in 1820 when she was 16 years old. Mm. And her mother died in 1834. Um, and that's just a year before she died herself. So she was 30 years old when her mother passed away. Do you know what she died from, Graham? I'll, I'll ask David that question. No, okay. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Mm, very um, young to die. Well, we'll oh, check in the book. back then, childbirth or whatever. It, we'll check whether it's yeah. childbirth because her sister also died at an early age, uh, Mary. And I think that was childbirth, but I'm not sure about uh, Eliza. We'll check that out tonight. Um, mm. We won't worry about all of this detail that's coming in. This is all the grandchildren of uh, Roland and Elizabeth that are just coming on the screen. And this is the ages at which the, the eight children passed away. Uh, poor Elizabeth drowned at age two. Mary died at age 26, Eliza at 31, Samuel at 34, mm. Jonathan 36. So that um, half of the children died before the age of 40, and then the other half yeah. lived to ripe old ages, or James' mm. age, ripe old age at 60. But, but So there's different experience there. And mm. uh, you know, we're not going through all this detail, but this is all of the grandchildren of Roland and Elizabeth. The only reason I point this out is that it seems that the last of the grandchildren of Roland and Elizabeth, his name was um, the, the two of them, George and Robert, and they passed away in 1942. That's the last of the grandchildren. Right. So, so that's a little bit about this interesting family. And I'm just talking just for a few minutes to give that overview of the eight children and the many grandchildren uh, in the family. And there has been a little bit of research done on some of the family lines. Most of it's been published by family members. So that means that these books are not in wide circulation. They were limited copies um, and you can't really get them anymore unless we republish them. So there's a little bit of work. And you know the 1998 book when we had a bicentenary and you know yeah. Gene Stewart's book, which does a bit of an update and includes more of the family lines. And you know that our association has a newsletter we put out three times a year and we try to to capture as much of the new history as we can. Now, I'm nearly finished this overview, but I'm just going to mention that we have four projects in place and we're going to have an event in May of next year. The first project is on research and publications. And we look for publications that have references to the family, including historical records, these, these types of government records that have many references to the family in the early days. But also there's emerging uh, studies, for example, Aboriginal um, research on Contact Australia. And this also refers to the Hassel family. There's <laughs> portraits. We're looking for portraits of family members. This is Elizabeth Hancock's. And uh, I can send you any of this detail of this. It's in the newsletters, but this is just pointing out that there's many publications on our family and then the Hassel Heritage Project to find out where our family members are buried and whether we can play a role in preserving uh, and upgrading, maintaining uh, their resting places. And that's mm. an ongoing project. This is uh, Hugh and Hassel in, in George Street in Parramatta at the very site of the Hassel home. It's now overtaken by big apartments and things. Mm. We have another project called Genealogy. And in this, we try to capture the accurate information about the family line so that those, you know, for, particularly for the earlier generation, some living people don't want to be on it. We understand that. But certainly for the first three, four, five generations, we want to get the accurate information. Uh, and we have software that does this, but we need uh, people's cooperation to fill it in where there are gaps. Uh, we can, we can uh, generate a specific types of printouts for people depending on what you you want what type of chart that you want 
And we have a transcription project because we have a large uh, collection of papers in the State Library of New South Wales, and they're online and we are currently transcribing them so that once they're transcribed, they, they, they're easier to read and also they're searchable by computer. So this is just showing that the Hassel family papers are up there with the MacArthur family papers, James Cook's papers, Banks papers, they're right there. Um, and the library is very proud of that collection. We are too, but we, we're looking for volunteers to be part of that project uh, so that we can get that, those papers transcribed. But that is not the end of the papers. There's at least 86 additional collections in the State Library of New South Wales that have Hassel references. And that's before we get to um, references to other other families that they're married into. So there's a lot of scope for, for research uh, in the future. And the final thing I'm going to mention before I stop sharing and hand over to, to Jennifer is that we're leading up to a, a program in May of next year. Uh, and it's going to, to be in um, Cobberty, Denby, um, um, at, at Middleton Grange, uh, which is um, sort of southwest of Parramatta. It's going to be in Parramatta, and there's going to be side trips possible to O'Connell and possibly even to Windsor. And that's in May next year. And one of the reasons we're having these sessions is to make people aware not only of the association, but of these activities that they can be part of and this big event that we want to get as many people as possible to get together just to have, it's 25 years since the, the bicentenary reunion. So after 25 years, we want to try and get the family back together again. So you're all welcome to see if you can take part in that. I'm going to stop the share now. That's the, the, the overview of the association and what its current activities. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to Jennifer and she's going to um, share some information uh, on her own family background and lead us into some discussion uh, of the Eliza line. So, uh, well, I'm, to, I'm, th th thank you, Graham. I'm glad that you've told me that I'm going to do that because I hadn't, <laughs> I hadn't had any idea I was going to do anything. But um, <laughs> this is all very new to me, and that's okay. But I've I've, I've just looked at the um, the printout from from the organisation, and I see that my great great grandmother is Kate Marion Walker. Now, has anyone ever heard of her? Kate Marion Walker? No. No? Probably no. not. You'd have to go back. And I can't do it because I've got these hands that won't work. And um, I don't know what to say. Um, Kate Marion Walker was the daughter of um, Thomas Brisbane Walker, I believe. And she is the granddaughter of Eliza and, and William Walker. So this is getting a bit hard all of a sudden. <laughs> it's all very confusing. Um, all Jenny, I know is I'm... Yes. I think because I know that you've done a little bit of uh, homework yourself on your immediate hmm. family, and that might be an hmm. interesting way to to get in. And I I know that you you know more than you think you know. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm, I suppose okay. Um, Kate Marion Walker. Whoops, I've got a a battery issue here, which is <laughs> I'm going to run out. I'm going to run out of. Um, Juice pretty soon. Anyway, Kat Marion Walker, who was the daughter of, she, she was a, grand, a grandchild of um, Eliza and William. Eliza, yeah. And so she married Robert Benjamin Black out in, in O'Connell. And they lived in O'Connell on O'Connell Plains. He was a, um, a, um, a miller who came over the mountain and set up a mill in um, O'Connell and then later moved to Molong. So the Black family then moved to Molong. My grandmother was actually born in, um, in O'Connell. Um, uh, this is all a bit sort of vague and 
and difficult for people to, to grasp, but it seems to me that it's not really relevant. Um, yes, I, I really don't know how to lead this on, honestly. Graham? Um, can, I, can I please, uh, I, I found yes, a little bit can. about Kate Marion Walker here in this please book. Please do, yes, I just, please to, do. So she he was born in 1864 in O'Connell, yes, which you said. That's right. Yep. Died in she lived a long time, died yeah, in 1950 he, at well, Vaucluse. In in South that's right. Yes, because she moved down there with her husband, yes. And married in 1887 in O'Connell. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can make out, it was the husband was Robert Benjamin Black. Is that right? That's correct. Robert Benjamin Black, he was a miller and he had... Um, it says quite, Miller of Molong, New South Wales, yes. Of Molong. He was known as the King of the West. He was quite was a well-known... Really? Yeah, yeah, he was quite a well-known person out there. He was um, Mayor of Molong for a while and um, his brother, Roderick, took over the, um, the flour mills in Grenfell. And um, so I, I know that they won... a. A, a flower, um, sh they won a flower prize in the Chicago show in some time, and it was that their flower was very, very good. Um, so my grandmother remembers being in Molong. In fact, my grandmother escaped Molong and headed to Sydney and um, went to live with Dr. and Mrs. Sands, her grand, her, her great, her, her, her um, aunt. And she, <laughs> my grandmother, thought it would be a good idea to get, a, to get a job. So she went off and joined some sort of the Tivoli dancers or something and had to be dragged back to Molong because she was being naughty and, and, and wanting to be a showgirl in Sydney. <laughs> and actually, one of her aunts delivered the Queen Mother. That's what I know. Goodness. Um, at Glim's Castle, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. she went... Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of an aside. That's the Black family. Yeah. But, you know, nonetheless, it's interesting. She went off to England and, um, yes, Auntie Susie, great-great-grand Auntie Susie went to England and became friendly with someone in, in, um, in Harley Street and um, ended up in Glimm's Castle as a, um, a nurse to the, the um, Bose Lyons family and ended up delivering the Queen Mother which is quite a nice little thing to know. Mm, and, and, and Susie died um, of breast cancer. So mm. um, that, that was great, great aunt Susie. Um, what else can I say? Look, the house in O'Connell where my great, great grandmother lived is still there. It's a lovely old little cottage. It was known as, as Garden Cottage. It's now known as Black's Mill Cottage, I think. And it's right on the Fish River. Um, and my great great uh, grandfather was known to have caught a forty kilo, forty pound cod out of the Fish River. <laughs> the, little, the little things you know, you know. <laughs> and the forty pounds is pretty big for a fish, you know. And the Fish River is not a big river. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was and, named and in I, hope. I, <laughs> I know, I've, I've often dreamed of going back and buying that place. I've been to it a few times. It's just a little cottage. And interestingly, I was um, in Scotland a couple of years ago and I went back and um, looked at the Black Family Cottage and it's almost um, it's almost the same house in O'Connell as, as, as in um, as the place in Tyrone in um, Tin room where they came from in Scotland. But that's getting off to the other side of the family. You know, I, I don't know much about the Walker side and the and 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 the Hassel side to some degree I know about, but the Walker side I know nothing much. Other than he was um, a very educated man who um, had perhaps the biggest library in in the colony, 3,000 books. I know that his papers were burnt when he died, whether they were burnt deliberately or burnt accidentally, I don't know. Does anyone know that? Yes, uh, all his... I did. Oh, Joyce. Oh, Joyce Warren. 
There she is. What do you have to say about that, Joyce? Um, yes, oh, um, that's all recorded in the Hassel, um, Jean Stewart's latest Hassel book. Uh, mm. and I'm, I'm descended from Henrietta Elizabeth, their first daughter and first child, who married um, Henry Kid, Kid Harper, who right. came to Priest Hitler in 1841 as a 22-year-old with his 14-year-old brother, and he kept diaries, and I can now record the diaries uh, with the Hassel papers in the Mitchell Library. My second cousin, uh, Greg Harper, has um, uh, uh, um, organised, and that, that's where they are. Well... And that's my um, line. Well, thank heavens you know, because I, 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 I'm a bit um, in the dark about all of this, Joyce. Yes. Uh, so I'm glad you know. So, Charles, what do you know? You're, you're from that, that line. What's your knowledge of the line? Well, I suppose initially uh, growing up in Bathurst, um, the, the whole area out of, given O'Connor is 20 kilometres out of Bathurst, was quite familiar mm. territory in it, uh, mm. t uh, t to us. Um, I'm descended from uh, uh, William and Eliza's daughter, Susanna, uh, mm -hmm. who actually married... Uh, Samuel Hebblewhite at the Methodist uh, Church in Bathurst. Um, I think that was 1844, which was about two years after um, the the church was put up, which is still the, the same method, uh, uniting church, which is in the middle of town there. Um, I'd, I'm not sure how long they stayed in the area, but I would gather they moved down to Sydney fairly quickly and uh, lived at um, uh, in Randwick, um, and in fact on our, our uh, and were very involved in the the Randwick community and the, at at uh, St Jude's Anglican Church in Randwick. So in fact, I have a certificate on our uh, on our wall which was. Uh, given to um, uh, Susanna when she was uh, retiring from being a Sunday school teacher after about 25 years of, um, uh, so it's this certificate, which would probably be about, I suppose, A0 in size. Um, and what? with all, all the signatures of uh, the- I can talk, but it's- Yeah, don't worry about yeah. it. It's so and yet so with it a, this line this relates just, to this line. Yeah, hey, jo hey, hey joyce you, joyce you just let, need to get rick to mute to mute so that yes. um charles can talk without because we can all we're talking over each other ways so if you just mute that's it terrific now go ahead charles so i suppose the other um thing i'll mention that the story that i told you jenny when we spoke a couple of weeks ago that mm. um when, before my uh, parents followed us up to armadale um i got uh, my father actually had um uh, got to see inside the um uh, what remained of the brisbane grove house uh, um, yeah. before it was uh, bulldozed which must have been in the mid 1950s the the property at that time was owned by a family called spicer um and uh, i gather it was um just before they were about to uh get rid of it it was just i assume just a, a wattle and daub or something like that so uh, yeah, and it have not survived very well um but he was able to go out to the the property and have a look through it um at that point and just before they left uh bathurst and i was uh, back there visiting uh, i got my father to take me out and show me where the, the house was um, which was quite a, a distance, actually quite a distance from O'Connell itself. Um, mm. So um, that was all. Uh, there wasn't much left there at the time. Um, it was all just a now just a, a very cleared paddock. Mm. 
but um, Dad was quite sure of the, the location of it. So that was all quite interesting to see at the time. Um, yeah. Charles, I, I've been down that road and, I, and I've seen that blank attic myself. Okay, um, yes. Yeah, nothing there. Nothing, Not nothing there at all. That's right. Um, mm. So uh, the only, uh, I suppose the only other things that I, I've known about the family of uh, through the um, some of the other books that have been published, such as the, the one by uh, Peter Proctor, which I... Uh, I would uh, maybe um, some of you are familiar with that one. I think that was titled Second Thoughts. Um, yep, that one. Right. You, you know, we, I don't, the first I'd heard of that was from you. And I'd be grateful if you would tell everyone about those two books because it was um, quite interesting to hear about those two books. So it was just mentioning that one and also the, um, the genealogy that was assembled by Spencer Philpot around about 40 years ago, um, which, um, which was of the, um, uh, I'm trying to remember how many of the, the hassle lines that it covered, but it was, sort of, um, I see David turning around. So I would assume that, I think it was called the, uh, the Hassel Hancock's connection, or something like that. Um, so, yes, that look again. Uh, that's only, yeah, so you've uh, you've got a copy of it. Yes, yeah, that's right. So yes, I, I so still do have a, an a, original one of those. Uh, but yeah, so beyond, but that's only the gene, genealogy. But the the Proctor book had. Uh, quite a lot of research and other useful information. Um, so, um, this was given to me by Eric and Sylvia Hebblewhite. Yes. Okay. So that yes, okay. Eric was my yep my uncle. Right. Right. And yes, I think uh, while Eric has been dead for about ten years, um, Sylvia died only about two or three years ago. All right. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's probably a, about the limit of uh, my knowledge of the, the walkers themselves. Um, I suppose it's sort of that uh, there were the geographic connections there. I was always intending to go into and look through the records in the Methodist Church or the Uniting Church in Bathurst, but never got to got around to doing that. Um, so. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so beyond, as I said, beyond what's in those books, I, I don't, there's not a lot more I know um, of that, um, uh, of those people. Um, in terms of my immediate family, I have a, a sister who's now moved back to Bathurst, although how much longer she'll be there, I'm not quite sure. Um, but uh, yes, our family was, well, both my parents were from Sydney rather than uh, really calling themselves locals. So um, they were, um, they both moved there in their adulthood. And then um, I suppose originally intending to stay there um, the rest of their lives, but ended up following us up to Armadale. Um, uh, so they moved up to Armadale about 14 years ago. And then dad, uh, Walter died about, um, uh, nine months after that, but my and my mother is still alive at this at the moment in her um, mid nineties, um, not doing the best, but uh, certainly um, still I'll go and see her tomorrow and let her know about all of it, uh, this meeting, and she'll be most interested in that. So she's with you in um, in Armadale, is she? Yes, so she's living in uh, one of the the nursing uh, one of the local nursing homes. So, um, and yes, is needs sort of uh, a high degree of care. Uh, she's in yeah, not yeah. in a great uh, not in great shape physically. Um, mm. So yeah, it's uh, uh, it's all quite hard for her at the moment. Yeah, yes, we all have to face that at some point, I suppose. Yes, That's the reality. Yes. Yeah, they say, growing old is not for wimps, they say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's for sure. It isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It is not. But yeah, I think um, the only, I've attempted over the years sort of where I found books which have made reference, especially to the uh, the hassles to get copies of those. And so while I don't have much of a collection, there's a few there. Um, I think I've got a, a copy of the, the reprint of the, I think, In Old Australia by, I think that was by James, James Hassel. Hassel. Yeah, I've got that one too. Yeah, and there wasn't so, original. There was an original. It's just gone missing in the family somewhere. <laughs> so yes, I have a, a reprint of that one. Um, that's uh, and probably a, there'd be a few other books that are making reference to various. So I think a couple of the Yarwood books, um, and um, and several others. There's one there, sort of a, re, a person who I ran into recently up here who um, I'm trying to remember what he's. Uh, he published a, a rather large tome on another early settler. Um, so he's given me a copy of that for me to work through. I, I gather it makes reference to the, the hassles at some point through there as well. Isn't it nice that here we are, all these disparate people in strange places, with all this little connection, this little yes. interest in each other. I love that. Yeah. I love that, that you're over there in Armadale and I can come and see you and we can put down a piece of paper and work out how we're related to each other. I guess we're about third cousins. That's my guess. Yes. I don't know if that's true. About third cousins. Yeah, that would sound about right. Yeah, it's lovely. I love it. Thanks, Charles, um, for, for that. If I uh, I'll just respond. Oh, uh, Joyce, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I'd just like to say in the 30s, um, uh, my mother was in contact with the Hebblewhites. Okay. Yes. So and when they lived in Bexley. Um oh, so as in uh, uh when they were in Baltimore Street. Yes. In, oh. I, I can't remember that um we we used to visit them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, but my mother's mentioned in the um Hassel book through the um Henrietta or Elizabeth line, Eleanor Maud Harper she was. Um, she became worn, okay. of course. Yes. So was that visiting Arthur and Muriel? Yes, I think so. I can't remember the names. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the house, the house uh, remained in the uh, in the family um, until um, it was the mid nineteen eighties. Yes. Um, when my uh, my cousins, or one, my cousin Janet. Uh, Hebblewhite, who became Janet Fitzpatrick, bought that house, and uh, and they restored it and lived in there for a number of years before they uh, before they sold. And then there was a, a big family party that was held there just before they uh, uh, just before they moved out, which um, I went to as a twenty-something. Um, and yeah, that was a. a but it, yes, there was a lot of because I suppose, especially because the house remained in the family for several generations. There, it was um, uh, it's, there was a lot of um, uh, it's, there, there was a lot of I suppose collected history about that. And in fact, there was a uh, in that house there was a uh, a book a bookcase which was owned by. Uh, or purchased by Samuel Hebblewhite, so who married Susanna Walker. So this, and we worked out that it was probably a, a, in the 1860s. Um, and um, I just uh, collected that bookcase from another relative a, a couple, uh, probably about six weeks ago, and it now sits oh, in really? our lounge room. Uh, so it's a yeah, lovely mid-Victorian uh, it's a bookcase. So. Uh, with glass, yeah, a very typical one of the era. But yes, it's sort of has, someone's put a sticker in or a piece of paper inside it, saying giving its history and saying how it had got thus far. So I suppose we'll add a little bit for, more on the bottom before it gets passed on to the next family member. <laughs> but yes, to have that one Great sitting, story. Story. to have yeah. something a piece like that, which has been sitting in the family for about 160 years, is. Um, uh, yeah. It's lovely. It's really lovely. So yes. Yeah, so ba uh, so sorry, Graham. I think I cut you off there before you were about to. Well, I was just going to respond to to so many of the things that you you brought up. Thanks for sharing a bit about your own family, 
um, and uh, you know you've highlighted so many of the reasons that we're we're trying to to connect to each other. Um, we um, each of us knows a little bit about our own family and and the the way that we we stretch back into the past. And this is called oral history. You know, this is stories told to the family. We have government records. We have official records. But that's not the stories of people's character and personality and triumphs and tragedies and uh, and what we we can do in this family history association is gather all these stories uh, and on their own they might seem insignificant but when we add them up it becomes a, a rich mosaic and we start to realize that in in this part of our family, because we're connected to many families, but on this Hassel line and other lines, the Walker line and, and the Shelley line and other lines, we're one of the early settler families and really uh, took a, 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 a an influential role in the, uh, the, the progress of early New South Wales. Not so much other states, but a little bit Victoria, a little bit Queensland, but certainly New South Wales, close to the government of the day, uh, involved in so many decisions were taken, even laying out uh, little towns, as is the case out at Oberon, I think, uh, and um, on a Kong plain. And, you know, you wouldn't believe that actually uh, the George Street house that Roland and Elizabeth lived in is now used by archaeologists. And I've, I've, it's been written about, and I've, I've talked about this in, 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 a, in a talk that I've given at, at the State Library, that uh, they actually look at the, the, the refuse that's there and yeah. they work out, for example, what medicines people were taking. They work out yes. what, what their diet was. And because these were some of the earliest families, uh, uh, post-settlement families, and they wouldn't have believed that, that these days somebody would be looking at their rubbish to see these things. <laughs> yeah. For example, women in business. Elizabeth um, Hassel was one of the early female shareholders in the Bank of New South Wales. Really? And, oh, right. oh, yes. And, and, uh, yeah. and um, believe it or not, Roland's descriptions of Tahiti, when he's just writing back to the LMS, He's just giving a report of what the conditions are. Those reports are some of the foundation reports used in anthropology because they created yeah. a baseline. Mm -hmm. They created a baseline of language and relationship. And now they're looked at. Uh, for, well, what, what was the situation at that time of the Tahitian culture before it changed with all the Europeanization and oh. missionization? Oh. And they referred oh. to Roland's writings and all he was doing was desperately writing back to the LMS saying look it's really tough here but <laughs> but he was a very descriptive writer and so there are many ways in which we when we start to look at the ways in which they were a, a pioneer family we look at their relations with indigenous Australia and yeah, how they they strove to to yeah. sort of you know uh, to express values of fairness and justice in the court between the, these the, you know so many um, uh, influences of the time of the way the land was being taken, um, but they employed Aboriginals. They educated them. They tried to to help us. And there are many. I've got many instances which it's not talking about the hassles. It's talking about an Aboriginal person. And we'll talk about how well educated they were, how well they spoke. And they say, yes, well, they, they were employed in the Hassel uh, family. And there are many interesting things, but that's just the first generation. Then we find with the second generation that each of the, each of the, fa each of the eight children had, had different lives and different experiences. But this is where the difference between the men and the women starts to become obvious, that the men uh, became involved in public life and the women were in private life. But Elizabeth Hassel... She raised eight wonderful children. And then she had 60 grandchildren, most of whom she knew. Now that's a busy life, but it doesn't get into the government records. <laughs> now, no. in relation to Eliza in Jean Stewart's book, and this is a book, this is a book about the hassles. But what Jean says in here about Eliza, she says, and she talks about. She's talking about more about Walter Laurie than about Eliza. He says his wife, Eliza, presumably lived up to his expectations as a suitable wife for a minister and supported him in all his difficulties and her influences were supposed to have helped him overcome his problems with alcohol. Little else is known about her, although she did win a premium award at the Parramatta Fair 
of October 19, 20, 1826 for a piece of colonial silk. Um, she died <laughs> at the Connell Plains in July 1835, aged 31. And Jean, who's like the family historian, says nothing much else is known of her. And so this is the challenge that we face is to put together just as much as we can. If we can find any letters that were written by her brothers to her, because maybe there's letters from, from Thomas Hassel to her. We don't know yet. Uh, so every, every little element that we can find of a reference in a book, early records, uh, help us to put this uh, picture together. Now I focus just on those first two generations, but we know so little about the third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation, sixth generation. It's not written about. And so mm. what we can do over a period of time is to value each of these stories and gradually put them into a context uh, and, and learn about, you know, not only the children of Roland Elizabeth, but their grandchildren, great grandchildren, and, and gradually put it all together. Now, not everybody leads a historically interesting life. So we're not going to document 40,000 people. But <laughs> Good. as... As Neil Gunson said in his wonderful address 25 years ago, he said the Hassels are one of those families that have contributed in all elements of Australian society as quiet achievers. They, they're not out there in the front lines making a big name for themselves, but they're there as pastoral. You've got many farmers. Now, they're not out there writing, but they're out there in agriculture. They know the land. They know the environment. Right now, we have many farmers in the family. We have many artists. We have creative people. We have mm. engineers, we have teachers, we have academics. Um, you know, we, ha we, have, we, have, we have dancers. We have many, many types of, of creative people who are part of this family. So it's partly about the past and it's partly about realizing that the legacy of Roland Elizabeth was to plant this quite large seed in, in Australian culture. And, mm. and by just being associated with each other, we start to see that. You know, we start to see all the what what flowered from from what they put down. So every photo is valuable. Every every record. Um, we don't know why Eliza passed away at thirty one. Has somebody got her de her death certificate? Did that record something? Um, mm. All the little bits of research count. Now, in the Samuel line, the Thomas line, um, there's more research has been done, but on the female sides, there's been less research. Now, because they're women, they're not in public life. But, you know, they they worked as hard as the men. And uh, these early women, particularly the daughters of Roland Elizabeth, they supported those husbands. And their mm. wealth, Roland's wealth, was transferred through them. And then the husbands used it often for their, <laughs> their what they wanted to do. And, you know, there's so many stories that we can still unpack as to the fate of the, the, the mothers, uh, the women, the wives, um, and what that tells us and what we can learn from it. So, you know, there's so many ways. But what I'm saying is that if you've got a few references in, in books, please share them with us. We'll check whether we were... Sometimes I'm still finding many, many new references to the family. Uh, mm. They keep on emerging. We've, we've got hundreds of references, maybe thousands, but there's always more in primary literature and in secondary. I'll give you an example. You know, Trove, the wonderful resource newspapers online mm. there's over mm. seven thousand references just to sort of roll and hassle and, wow. and you know and this is before we go into other other names now no one's gone through all that let alone all the other names and all the other generations so there's a tremendous mm. amount that's possible and then there's using government records church records so um you know i think the project is everybody just does a little bit and shares it through a medium such as this association put it in the newsletter and over a period mm. of time, it'll build into substantial knowledge of, of our mm. background. So mm. I'm just encouraging you to, even if it's a small thing, a little photo that's, you know, 60, 70 years old, that's a valuable thing. Now, people are going onto our Facebook page and they're sharing those. People we don't even know. And they say, oh, I'm, I'm from the Hassel line. And here's my grandmother's yeah. albums. And we we have a meeting every year. Um, James has been to one. Uh, my father's been to them. We have a research meeting at the state library and people come who have never met before and they show a whole album of, of materials that might be a hundred years old. And wow. we have this idea that in the future we might be able to, because sometimes their children don't want to keep those albums. 
takes up oh. too much space or they're not interested. We have this idea that if we can get another set of material together to make another large contribution to the state library so that they're held in posterity. And we also have this idea oh. with artifacts. Some people have a, a special watch or a special Bible or a, some, some fabric that we would like to go to something like the Powerhouse Museum with a whole collection, not one little item, but 30 items. Say so we have this, this picture of the settler society, the settler family, and we'd like to see about having a display. Uh, and we could actually display the, the locations where they farmed. Uh, and then these artifacts could be in one display case. So that's an idea that we have. We just want to explore that. So I just want to share that with you. Great ideas. Yes, uh, mm. no, that sounds, yeah, that sounds, uh, yeah, very good. And I suppose, especially as you made the comment about people making uh, unsolicited material coming forward through Facebook and that sort of thing, that it just gives the means mm. for that and the medium for that sort of um, drawing together of resources. So that's, yeah, that sounds, uh, um, yeah, mm. that's just, that's really good because yes, I, I suppose that's the thing. They all these things just get lost in the amongst the forty thousand, uh, and that we can uh, those that it can be um, at least brought together in uh, at a conceptual level. There is uh, really valuable in again in terms of saying uh, bringing together that that larger story that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, tonight we the, the the emphasis was on Eliza and 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 her her descendants, and we maybe should focus back on that before we finish for tonight. Um, so this session was meant to be just a start, to find some starting points, uh, how to proceed with just learning more about the the heritage of Eliza and William, uh, and um, you know just by sharing the stories of, of their descendants and getting in touch with each other, and then seeing if who might want co to come to the May. 2023 meeting and meet up there and and just take this a bit further and see who's got photos who's got letters who who who's got some oral history that, that it can be recorded uh, who are the the most senior members of the family line that 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 can remember the great grandparents that, you know that we never have access to because they've passed away and collect mm. those memories and record them so that's you know it's a very simple sort of idea that we've got there and I just want to throw that out there and 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 uh, so I think now, now we just leave it, to, you know, to to do Jenny and Charles and, and and Joyce to decide whether you want to meet up again with more of your cousins and uh, and maybe you know do it again and and uh, see who else can get online and and whether you want to start collecting stories or just meet each other. It's up to you. This is a an experiment in in getting connected mm. uh, in the family. Well, I most suppose. definitely. Most definitely, I, I, I would like to get connected with whoever I can get connected with. And Catherine, you're closest to me, so I've got your phone number and I'll be in touch with you. And then Charles, you're over in in um, in um, Armadale. That's not very far away. I often go out that way. So it'd be you like of something? Sometime. Drink of water or drink a cup of tea or something? No, Absolutely. No, it's, yeah. um, so just in terms of your role as sort of the line coordinator, Jenny, to what extent, <laughs> how, I suppose, how much time do you have for sort of tracking down um, uh, members of that li of the line or how much motivation if, do you have to do that? Or if, if, I, if I could know where to go, I'd do it, but I have no idea of how to, to go about that sort of thing. Because, um, yes, like there's certainly a, a few... Um, they're not quite contacts, but it's because I don't, I'm not sure where some of these people are up to, uh, are these days, but there's certainly names of and connections that, uh, or people who I know of who would be trackable. Um, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm retired. I can do that. I can, if, if, if I can be given names, I will be more than happy. Okay. To, to track people down. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you've got anything you can give me, go ahead, please. I've, yeah, I've got a few there anyway that I can. Um, 
people who over the uh, over the last twenty years or so we've worked out that we were related to each other, and and uh, I'm not quite sure where they are, but I know I'd I'd know how to track them down at least, so hmm. um, I could pass on some of that information for you. Well, let's be in contact then. Um, mm -hmm. I've got your phone number, so I can call yes. you and get, and get that information. So uh, I will do that the next couple of days. Okay, that sounds yes. good. That sounds good. Excellent. And Joyce, are you still there? Yes. yes. Oh, good. Joyce, um, you may well you may well have contacts yourself because you're. But, but, you know, you're... Uh, I only have our Harper line. Um, yeah. And, and uh, I do have um, Jenny Farrell, who's a direct descendant of Otto Hassel. Um, I see her at, sail at um, Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron, and um, we used to see her as children, her grandmother, uh, in the 30s and early 40s. But I don't have a computer or the internet, and I'm at a friend's house tonight to see... Well, well well, Joyce, that's okay because I will come to see yeah, you. In but I don't week. have any more contacts, and I think our family, the Harpers, have done as much as we can to put yeah. all the archives we had um, in into the um, in with the Hassel family. Yes. They're there now. My my cousin Greg Harper has done yes. everything to um, get it to to the Hassel. Yes, I, I spoke with Greg, yes. and um, he has put quite a lot of material into the Mitchell Library, so yeah, yes, and that, that's that all that can be done. That. Yes, it's all there, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great, and I will nonetheless come to see you when I'm in Sydney next yes. and look forward it's to that. It's very been interest, very interesting to hear, Graham, and uh, also about the um, restoration of the... Um, of the, the, the tombs of yeah. the, the various family members, yes. Mm. Thanks. But I haven't, I haven't received the paper publication for the June um, or July um, newsletter. Yes, our apologies, Joyce. What happened was that uh, there was a change of staff at the school and yes. the message didn't get through to print some copies. So we'll get that fixed for you. I, I would like to actually have it. Yes, yes. thank you. Al yes. Alison kindly uh, emailed Greg the, um, the the page required for tonight. And, yes. and I, he emailed that to my friend where I am now. Yes, thank That's you wonderful. very much in Belgala. I live in, in Manly, yes. In Manly, oh, I see. Yes, um, uh, in Kilburn Towers on Manly Point. Okay. I've been there 57 years. And I think that Joyce has a lot of uh, family stories that she can share uh, at the right oh, time. Oh, it, you know, I don't know that, that, that much, yes. You, Only you think, what I've been told, you know, a bit of... You, you, you mainly think mainly you more on the Harpers rather than... The, the hassles, yes. Well, that's all the same family, Joyce. Yes. And um, and what you think, you, you know, you think you don't have that much, but in fact, every family story is important yes. and, and valuable. And I look forward to meeting with you and hearing whatever yes. you've got to share. Yes, <laughs> it's good. Okay. Mm. Okay. I don't, don't think I, I, I will we'll try and come to the um, uh, following ones with the other fam uh, family members. That would be great. The <laughs> other children, yes. That would be great. Thank you very much. But Thank you, I Joyce. hope to come to um, some of the um, um, t uh, events next May. Excellent. And I saw it on uh, the... Joyce? Oh, oh, yes. Joyce, I'd like to give you a special invitation to the Samuel line. Uh, I hear the, the Bardsley name uh, being mentioned. Uh, Nina Bardsley is, was an auntie of mine, uh, and we're looking forward oh, yes. to getting the, the yeah, Bardsley. Yes, yes. The, the, well, that's um, Jenny Farrell's, um, probably her grandmother, great-grandmother, yes. Yeah, yes. So uh, 
uh, if if you could come along with that, that would be great. And uh, that's in the 20, towards the end of September. Um, but it, it's, it's refreshing when, to hear those when, names. When Tony's there, yes. Oh, oh, so, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Yes. I'll be in touch with her uh, to make sure. And we're hoping to get... I know she's a member of the association, so she would have it all, yes. And, and good to, as a, an old squadron member of many years ago, good to hear that the Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron being mentioned as well. So oh, there yeah. we go. What, yeah, what, the squadron. Was <laughs> what was your name? Uh, uh, James Daniel. Uh, and if you, if you go oh. down into the, the archives, I'm down there on a park, third in the moths in about <laughs> 1965. <laughs> anyway, that's, oh, that's another story. Well, I, I joined in, in 1961. Uh, Okay, okay, the, the, the pack of days. Yeah, no, there we go. No, that, that's yeah. good. <laughs> Can I just ask a um, slightly different question? Charles, have you got, uh, there's a lady doctor in Armadale called Hebblewhite, I think. Yes, I'm married to her. I, I <laughs> guess that, I guess that. That's interesting, yeah. <laughs> Because uh, I've been asking about her. I was just wondering. Uh, my niece is a uh, doctor in Armadale too. Okay. Kathy Wiles. Ah, Wiles. yes, yes. Um, so did Catherine, uh, their, uh, their children, well, one of their uh, daughters is best friends with our daughter at school. So, so, Charles, you see, the point of this is that they are related to each other, but they didn't know it. Oh, well, they no, they did know it. Oh, they did know it. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. I didn't. I wasn't sure what the connection is, but they right. knew that they were related to each other. And, Isn't that and yeah. I can't, oh, that's oh, that's fascinating. That it's that's a connect. That's yeah. So yes, we know. Uh, it's, uh, Kathy, uh, Catherine Wiles, and Phil, her husband, quite well, and their kids. So. So yes, and their well, their daughter is down in Canberra with my daughter, and they continue to see each other. So, yes, oh, right. that's... very good. Yes. Well, another interesting thing. Um, do you do you remember a doctor called Payne in um, Nigel Payne. Yes. Nigel Payne. You know him? Well, his mother. Yes. Uh, well, he's he's also a descendant. Okay. Yes, his mother was a Campbell, and Campbell. Mm -hmm. Married of one of the Hassels, and uh, or one of the Hassels married a Campbell. Anyway, so <laughs> it, it, there's all sorts of connections when you start looking. And my first boss was, well, I won't go into that, but you find relatives everywhere. Yes. If you start looking, especially and, if you go back a few generations. Yeah. I was just going to add another one in there that's uh, a recent mayor of Armadale was uh, Laurie Bishop. Uh, who was the uh, son of the the famous Arthur Bishop? Um, right. Is that is he a relative or what? Um, yes, he's a he's a relative. Arthur um, Arthur Bishop. Uh, I think he's probably about a, a third or fourth cousin um, of uh, myself. But he, uh, I think, his claim to fame is he uh, developed or invented. Uh, uh, variable ratio power steering for rack and pinion power steering for cars and has sort of got the worldwide patents uh, for this and his company in, in Sydney Bishop Steering Systems sort of creates this for cars all throughout the world. Um, wow. So, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so the, his son ended up being mayor of Armadale for a little while. Uh, mm. uh, well, and only about, I think that was about seven years ago or something like that. So I'm not sure if Laurie's still around here, but that certainly would be one person to try and uh, try and hunt down. Yeah. So I just did a search for Bishop in our, in our uh, genealogical tree. And you see there's bishops, there's uh, Albert Bishop married a Hebelway. Yes. And uh, yeah, but, yeah. five children. Can you see it? Yes, I Yes, I can see that. So, oh, just see. Yep. Yeah. So that's where it starts. The bishops are married in there. Mm -hmm. Very and, good. Uh, yep. So, 
So thanks very much, everyone.